Hello again, this is David Coyle for Real Life Worth Living, and this is a very special message since we have the Christmas season upon us, and Christmas Day coming up in just a little over a week. I'd like to demythologize a little bit. Uh, that is something uh, much different than we see in going on in the stores and uh, even here in a lot of pulpits. I want to take some of the cute and cuddly away from it and uh, bring in the truth for the reason for the season of Christmas. It has nothing to do with sleigh bells. It has absolutely nothing to do with the North Pole or even the giving of presents to loved ones and friends and those less fortunate around the world. And there are plenty of those in every one of those categories. But, you know, peace is the one thing that everyone seems to be looking for and has been my entire lifetime. And uh, for everybody's lifetime before me and everybody's lifetime after me, however many there may be. Peace is that uh, precious and ever elusive commodity for which we all seek and very few of us find. Many times we look in all the wrong places to find that peace. We overlook the one and only source for the bringing of true and absolute peace in our lives and that's in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what is promised in the birth of Jesus Christ. The coming of the Jewish Messiah for whom they had waited for so long. Everyone down through the annals of time in Jewish history was looking for one who would be called the Messiah, Messiah. And when Jesus was born, he was born Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. The angel told his parents individually, actually told Joseph, who uh, passed it on to Mary, and you shall call his name Yeshua, the salvation of Jehovah, for he shall save his people from their sins. And that is where true, real, lasting, heartfelt, soul-felt peace comes from knowing that your sins are forgiven and that you can walk with peace with God through the person of Jesus Christ. The importance of his birth isn't the schmaltz of a cute, cuddly, uh, precious little baby boy, and they are that. I had a little precious, soft, tender baby boy who grew up to be not such a soft, tender 30-year-old man. Cool kid. But you know, that little baby who was born 2,000 years ago isn't a cute, cuddly, schmaltzy uh, little baby now either. He grew up. He became a man. He became more than a man because he came to earth more than a man. He was God the Son who stepped into this world in order that he might grow as a man and demonstrate God to man and demonstrate man to God in order to offer everlasting life to man, to offer uh, every rich blessing in heaven to earthly man through accepting him as Savior and coming into uh, the knowledge, the, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. It is his cross, his resurrection, and his eternal kingdom which are of import in this season, not simply his birth. His birth was an ends to a means. The means for providing salvation was the cross. His coming and his return, his parousia, are of import in this time. And they are inseparable in the annals of Scripture. He is the babe born in the manger, that's to be certain. He is the Savior on the cross who died and was buried and rose again. He is the Lord coming in the clouds. He is the victor over sin. He is the king over all the earth, a renewed earth, a blessed earth, a reconditioned earth, an eternal earth. 
a glorious earth in which we have a part if we know him as Savior, if we have trusted him as our Savior. Here then is the message of Christmas found in Isaiah's book. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth forever and ever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this, Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. And then adding to it, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And in Matthew 1, 23, the words are added, which being interpreted is God with us. That's what Emmanuel means. He is God who came to earth, took upon himself the form of a human being, grew as a man, died as a man, was buried as a man, and rose as the victor over death, sin, the grave, and eternity. So that if you and I will trust him as our Savior and ask him to forgive us our sins and to move into us and to be our Savior, then he will do just that very thing. He is the king from everlasting to everlasting. He is, the, he is God the Son who came to establish a kingdom. He is wonderful both in his birth and in his life, in his ministry, in his miracles, in his death, in his resurrection, in his coming again, and in the fact that he wants to draw to himself a kingdom made up of redeemed individuals. His counselor. That is, he is the reasonable Lord who uh, approaches us in a reasonable sense in order to woo us to his heart and to his side. He is filled with compassion. He offers gifts and the greatest of these is everlasting life. He is the everlasting Father who parents his creation, who builds a family through faith. And we are his children. Only if we have trusted him as our Savior. He is the Prince of Peace, offering peace for your very soul. His kingdom is without end, of total peace, of total justice, and of judgment in perfection. And his kingdom is filled with perfect beauty. In fact, we will be changed. And we will be changed into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And whatever he looks like, we look like. And whatever uh, his personality and his character will be our personality and our character. For we shall see him as he is. Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea. But he needs to also be born in your heart. Have you allowed him to be born in the manger of your heart? That's where he desires to be, in your heart. He came to give the gift of everlasting life. Have you received his free, incomparable, peerless, matchless gift of life that he wants you to have? He came to call you into his family, into his eternal kingdom. Have you conceded? I hope you have. If you haven't, you can for as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even them that even to them that believe on his name, John 1 12. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That life, my friend, is for you. It comes as a product of faith, of believing the Lord Jesus Christ. The babe in the manger, the Savior on the cross, the Master who rose, the King who is coming. Our Father, we thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for that precious gift of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the life in Christ that is ours through faith. I pray that many will trust him and know him, especially in this Christmas season, 
and may their lives be different than it, they ever have been before. We pray it in his precious name and for his sake, amen.